right. Hello and welcome to your Daily Dishonesty Poster Project. So as we continue on in typography, this is a chance to really improve and expand your skill set. So, Daily Dishonesty Poster. You are creating a poster using Illustrator that pays homage to those little lies we tell ourselves just to make it through the day. So your Daily Dishonesty is supposed to be a humorous statement, but still school appropriate. And you want to express your sentiment using the power of design and typography. Examples are such as, the dog ate my homework, I'm almost ready, just one more bite, etc, etc. The project constraints are, you must pick a design style from the given options, you must use typography, basic shapes, colors, and patterns, no images or photographs, and you must have at least three versions of your poster. So, the first thing you're going to be doing is you're going to be going to your Daily Dishonesty Poster folder in your Google Drive and click on the do working document. Here you'll put what you choose as your design style, uh, a link to the Pinterest board that you'll be creating, and some quote ideas. All right? So, if we look back here, you'll see we have a page with all the different graphic design styles that you have as options. Now this isn't a end-all be-all of all graphic design styles. These are just a few that I've chosen for you to use. All right, so you're gonna take your choice, right? So for example, if my choice was Swiss International, I would choose Swiss International. I would type that here. Then I would create a uh, Pinterest board in your Pinterest account called Swiss International. All right, and then you're going to have at least seven to ten pins of examples of either Swiss International or inspirations for your poster. Okay? So you must have those steps before you start working. You'll then watch this tutorial and you'll start actually working on your project. Again, I encourage you to look for fonts that go along with the particular style that you're using because that will help add to the purpose of the style that you've picked. So here's my project exemplar. Again, I picked Swiss International. And if you go to the graphic design styles, which have all of the descriptions of each of the projects, you can see that here it says, Swiss International is best recognized for its complete lack of embellishment. The style employs the use of negative space or areas lacking content in layouts and could appropriately be labeled as very clean. And you notice some of the examples um, that I see here, we have like overlays of color and color blocks. And these are all things that I can start utilizing because I am using this style in my posters. Now, whatever style you choose, you must be faithful to that style. So if you choose late modern or you choose art deco or postmodern, you need to make sure your poster is designed using that style. All right. So you've picked your style. Right, you've done your Pinterest board, and then you have a couple different quote ideas, and you're like, I know what quote I want to do, I'm ready to go. What you'll then do is you'll go to your Daily Dishonesty, Daily Dishonesty Poster folder, and you will download the Your Name Daily Dishonesty Poster um, template that I've made for you. Again, each of these projects, I am making a template for you, you need to be using this template. Your Name, you need to rename this with Your Name. You will then open it up in Illustrator. And you can see here I've actually started to get working. So the file that you'll open up looks like this. You'll have an artboard at top where you'll have to put in your daily dishonesty. And you see here I put my example one more minute, I promise. Uh, you'll put in your style, my example, Swiss International. And you'll also end up putting the fonts that you use. So uh, since I've already done one example, my example uses Frutiger Light. And again, whatever fonts you use, I want you just to be cognizant of what fonts you're using. All right, you'll notice there's also several artboards. One, two, three at the top. If you look in the artboards panel, you can actually see them. And then one, two, three at the bottom. So you have to do at least three versions, but you can choose if you wanna do landscape or portrait. And you can do a mix, it's really up to you. I really want you to stretch your design muscles and play around with layout, with typography, with all those lovely design principles that we've gone over. So, what are you gonna do? You're going to work on each one of these artboards individually. And there's many things that you can do. And again, this also depends on 
which style you end up choosing. I really want you to utilize using the layers, right? So it's a good idea to uh, create a layer for, say, the background and uh, layers for like the text and different aspects. This will help you as you work to stay organized. So for example, if I have done one version and I'm ready to do another, um, I can use shapes. So I can use shapes, for example, to take create a background. Um, I encourage you to think about your color choices. Here's libraries. You can go into libraries and look at other colors. And very importantly, the appearance panel. This is very important for when you're designing. This lends you the ability to not only have one fill or one stroke, but more than one fill or more than one stroke. So you can actually layer fills and strokes one on top of each other. So if I do one at, at a time, you can see I've now layered the two different fills one on top of each other. And this is something that's really interesting to use and play around with. So as you keep going, I want you to really try to play around with using the tools and the skill sets that you've already learned and perfect them. So again, you can use shapes, any of these shapes here, right? You just click down to get access to more of them. You can use any of the shapes and you can also use the pen tool, but I don't want you using photographs or images. All right, so I've added my background and I'll notice, oh no, I've actually added it to the wrong layer. So I'm just gonna delete that and paste it into the right layer. And this is where layers are very important to use because now I can actually lock that layer and I'm working with my type and I don't have to worry about by accidentally clicking on the wrong element. So when I put my, my text in, and I'm going to put that in the text layer here. So again, you can either draw out or just click. And here you can put your quote. So here you notice you can actually change the color and the opacity of that text. And then when you layer them on top of each other, so I'm just duplicate it, you can see that you have this really cool overlay effect. And that, that works really well for uh, my design because I'm using the Swiss International, but this may not be applicable to you. Other things that I really want you to play around with are not just the color and the type and playing around with those tools is you can also do uh, what we learned in the last lesson, which was actually to create outlines. So, for example, if I had some text and I'm just going to delete these. So if I had some text here, and again, if you see the little red uh, plus sign, that just means your text box isn't big enough and you can resize it or resize your text. So if I said, this was my text and I actually just wanna play with the letters, remember you can right click, create outlines, and then you can ungroup and here you can actually play with moving the particular letters around. So that's another option you can actually play around with. And another thing I want to show you is if we use the pen tool, and again, remember the pen tool, it's one of my favorite ones, and you draw something, you can actually convert this into um, a text path. So now I can type along that. And again, how did I do that? Really simply, I drew out something with my pen tool. Then I took the text tool and I just brought it over until you see the icon changes and then you click and now it becomes an editable text path. And once it's uh, clicked like that, you can actually play around with moving it on and all sorts of stuff. So this is something else you can play around with. So again, there's a lot that we've been learning, a lot that we've been doing, but there are certain constraints to this project and certain things that you need to make sure you're doing. So number one, is you need to make sure you're being faithful to whatever design style you've picked. Number two, you really want to explore and experiment using typography, basic shapes, colors, and patterns. Make sure you're not using images or photographs and make sure you're doing at least three versions of your project. Now say you've done three versions and you've done them all in the landscape and you're like, I want to do another one, but there's not another artboard. Remember, you can use this tool right here, which is the artboard selection tool, and then you can hold down the Alt key and duplicate that board. And the same thing goes for any of the portraits. When you're actually all done and you should be continually saving your project as you work, the when you're all done, you should go File, Export, 
make sure you select JPEG, and very, very importantly, click Use Artboards, because you want to export each of these artboards individually. Then you click Export, and then you'll see you actually get um, a different JPEG for each of the artboards. So here it's exporting. And I have this in my project symbol. And now you can see, oh my goodness, I have so many JPEGs. And now what I want you to be doing is I only want you to be exporting the ones that you've actually used. So say that I, I didn't use the portrait ones, well then you don't need to hand in the portrait ones. You only want to really hand in the ones you used. So that's the project, that's what you're doing. And what I really want you to make sure you're doing is playing around and try to use the whole entire artboard. Now, the iter different iterations don't have to have the same fonts, but any fonts that you use should be put right here so that we have a record of what you actually did. And I want you to play around. Again, play around each time. Push yourself as a designer, as an artist, as a creative, and really use your Pinterest board as a source of inspiration. So final, final thought is what you put into this is what you get out of it. And just like playing the piano, design takes a certain amount of practice in order to achieve a certain level of proficiency. So practice, practice, practice. You're only going to help improve your own skills. Mm -hmm.